This is Startup Storefront. In 1926, Charles Taylor patented the world's first soft serve ice cream machine. With the pull of a lever, these machines could dispense the cold yet soft ice cream we all know and love. Since that day, soft serve has pretty much been dispensed from those same machines. And if you've ever been to a McDonald's where the ice cream machine is broken, you know the frustration of this aging system. However, 97 years after the first soft serve machine turned the ice cream eating world upside down, Joe Nietzsche has revolutionized the way we consume soft serve ice cream. He has created a way to package soft serve in a pouch so you can consume it whenever, wherever. You no longer need to be Jeff Bezos to enjoy soft serve ice cream in your house because now you can grab a few pouches from the grocery store and keep them in your freezer. Or you can eat them all the way home. There's no judgment from us. In today's episode, we chat with Joe, the founder of CVT Soft Serve about how they're grappling to keep products on the shelves because their demand is so high, the importance of making his product LA mom friendly, and why going on Shark Tank is a hard pass from him. All right, welcome back to the podcast. We're talking to Joe from CVT, made a pivot, and he's here to tell us what you did. All right, so a long time ago, you were doing the truck thing. Yes. We had had several conversations around how to scale. Yes. And now you've just launched a new product. What is it? This is CVT Soft Serve To Go. It is the first of its kind soft serve ice cream in the freezer aisle. Grab and go, no mess, no machine, no prep, just eat it on the go. What led you to this? Like when I think about it, it's, it looks like a go-gurt or like yogurt on the go, but what was the thing? Cause this category doesn't exist. And so to some extent you're part genius, part hacker here. And so that's flattering. What, what, what led you to do it this way? So trying to expand the brand, trying to understand how we can do this without finding a fleet of 1961 trucks. And, uh, my customers were, they would normally get a soft serve cup with a dome lid on it to go. And I'd ask them, you know, how does it taste? They said, oh, we take it out of the freezer. It tastes like Ben and Jerry's. Or if it starts to melt, okay. it tastes like soft serve, your soft serve again. So it's like light bulb moment. Okay. If we can package this in a way where it melts slightly, we could do this. And that was about a two year development R and D. Yeah. Not What's the hard part of this is the hard part, the packaging, like in terms of like, okay, so you have a concept of like, okay. okay. Yeah. How seven, to shelf stable seven all natural ingredients. That was, I wanted to make it LA mom friendly. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. Um, LA mom friendly, all natural seven ingredients, trying to figure out how do we get the taste to be as close or if not the same as the trucks okay. without a soft serve machine. That's the hard part. Very hard getting the consistency right because right now you're a brick how do i get it from brick to soft serve instead of from brick to soup mm -hmm. there's a middle ground which is what your friends here are consuming right now and at some point are you thinking i mean it's a whole another game it's one thing running like this like retail on wheels business and now you're in the cpg business it's a whole another game it's completely new i'm learning every single day okay. so i have a team of guys that are helping me because okay i Definitely, it takes a village. Yeah. What's the team? What are they focused on? Are they um, I have attorneys helping me with all the legal and the patent work. Yeah. I have okay. a sales guy who actually grew vitamin water to 500 million in sales. He's small company. Yeah. It's not 50 cent, is it? It's not 50 cent. <laughs> His name's Jason. He helps develop and build brands sales wise. And uh, I met him through a CBT customer. I have some a really great creative guy that used to work for Stanley at Paramount and did all their movie posters. If you've seen a Avengers poster, his it's him. name was on it. Yeah, these are beautiful. They're pretty cool. Thank you. I like and the packaging. I have a finance guy that's been helping with our fundraise, and it's been really good. And the strategy, I know right now you're at Tacos 1986. What other locations are you at? Are you in retail? What? What? How did you sort of get to market? We launched with Gelson's. Yeah. I wanted to go premium. It's a premium ice cream. That was our first pitch meeting. Give me a window into So you're, you're sitting down with Gelson's. You have this idea. I don't know if they've ever done this. I don't know if this has been done before. And so are they like... What are they telling you when you're pitching them? Do they see it? Do they not see it? Like, where are we going to put you? I didn't you? even have the packaging. They were in, like, no joke, mm. uh, breast milk storage pouches. Perfect. Yeah. So I yeah. brought the product there. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And showing them what it was. <laughs> I had a wonderful pitch deck from my guy, my Paramount creative guy. And I pitched them, and they tried it, and they were sold. And Jason's sales guy told me, he said, Joe, these things take at least a year to get on shelf. And in the room, they, want, they said, how soon can we get it? So they were really excited because it's, yeah, it's a new category. And what did they see though? Were they like, like, where are they going to put you? Were they thinking they put you right in the ice cream? Did they Novelty. not know? Okay. Next to a, a cookie sandwiches, whatever the grab and go soft serve or grab and go ice cream is. Okay. 
for novelties, but my argument to that is I don't feel like we're in, in the exact same category in that it's no mess. Yeah, I would agree with that. It's so, a little bit confusing. And how's it going so far? Incredible. Sold out all 27 locations three times, Gelson's. Oh, wow. Uh, we've outsold their top two, I won't name the names, their top two ice cream competitors times yeah. five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds crazy. Um, it doesn't sound. So people, there's a, there's an appetite. And what do you credit that to? Do you think it's your social media? Do you think it's your influencer network of celebrities? Uh, yeah. <laughs> what's, what, what's I'm, your I'm thing? the influencer. Um, <laughs> I think it's the product stands for itself, but also, I mean, it's just a fun new thing to try. And yes, our social media following people jumped in, but I was surprised to hear Cases were selling out in San Diego and Santa Barbara where we have no following. I assumed in the San Fernando Valley and around LA it would be popular, but it's been popular at all locations. And now are you expanding? Are you taking different retailers? We're additional, gro- additional grocery. We just landed a week ago on campus at UCLA. Oh, nice. So I wasn't That's even, fun. Yeah, I wasn't considering that, but there's a lot of kids there that like to eat ice cream. So. Yeah. And are you raising capital? Because this is an expensive endeavor just to get off the ground. How are you? How I are did you? A family friend that? seed round that went great. Yeah. Now there's a lot of opportunity where I want to hire key employees. Yeah. Build our inventory, some machinery. So we're involved in a Series A round right now. And when it comes to the trucks, do you just view that like a marketing branding exercise? Like, will you keep them, or is this? I'll keep them. Yeah, I think they're going to be okay. great for PR for putting them at grocery store parking lots, letting people know about the brand. I think I mean, they're mobile, so that's. Great. makes it easy yeah yeah but eventually yeah we'll keep the trucks going they're kind of two separate things but they help each other that's actually a really good idea i hadn't thought about like instead of doing the whole taste like table inside the grocery you could just do it outside, do it outside. yeah here's and you give here's, someone a coupon being like go inside and y- you should work for me because that's, exactly, that's exactly that's what we're actually doing. a brilliant idea that's what we're doing will you ever do a pop-up or like a like a location is that ever i know a little while ago you not really but would you do it now Probably. just to have like a flagship I would consider permanently parking a truck. Yeah. Farm cup In style. a building? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, having a flagship. But yeah, no, the trucks are great for that. We're going to move them from location to location. To What's been the hardest part of this transition for you? All of it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is really like a whole new game. It's a, yeah. it's a beast. Yeah. I Again, I have no problem. I'm not like, I don't walk into the room, throw my hand, like, I know what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm a rookie. I don't understand. Can I learn from you? When you're hiring the experts. Yes. Which is smart. Yes. What's been the most valuable thing you think you've learned as you've gone into CPG? The most valuable thing, nothing moves quickly. So just to have a lot of patience. Yeah. It's a hurry up and wait game. Yeah. Even though it, I mean, it has been moving quickly, but just knowing that these things take time. Yeah. And also for, I mean, from all aspects, from sales to production. So we didn't anticipate selling out. We thought we would do a, a certain number of sales per week and we just blew it out of the water. So keeping up with production has been a challenge. That's awesome. We're working on it. Will you ever do this thing? So we, we were talking to Holy Grail Donuts where they do like this donut of the month thing with a chef. Uh-huh. Will you ever do this thing where you introduce a new flavor with, with just someone fun? And it doesn't have to be a chef. It could be like anyone that you just enjoy working with. Yeah. I mean, we talk about doing coffee flavors all the time. We talk about doing s- strawberry. So oh. yeah, our base is there. So I we like can definitely that. expand the, the line. And then you have the truck. So it's almost like you could beta test in the truck's Right. And so yep. it's almost like free, free R and D to some extent in a controlled environment. And then if people like it, it's easy. Yep. Do you sell them individually or in packs? We sell them individually. We thought we would need to do multi packs, but people are just buying them in bulk. We never anticipated that. The average Gelson shopper is purchasing at least four to five minimum. Yeah. I assume if you have kids or friends, you want to grab it one for each. Yeah. But I think the scarcity of it all also created this demand of we better grab it while it's on shelf. What do you sell them for? How much are they? They are four ninety nine at Gelson's. Okay. It would suck to go to a barbecue and then you're like the person that didn't get one. That would suck. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your customer? Is it mostly moms? LA moms, like uh, you said before? No, I said I made it LA mom friendly for the ingredient panel. But I say our customer is uh, Nick used to nursing homes, pretty much babies to grandparents. I know that's I know that's everyone. What a line. No, I'm telling you, <laughs> it is the two most popular flavors of ice cream in the world. Okay, chocolate and vanilla. That's it. There's a famous quote from Baskin Robbins. They said, do you know why we have 31 flavors? To give people 30 reasons to go in and buy vanilla. Vanilla is the most popular flavor in the world. We actually, on our trucks, vanilla outsells chocolate two to one. But yeah, our demo is everyone. I have to ask this because we've been talking to so many Shark Tank people. Yeah. I got to know, are they emailing you? Are they trying to get you on the show, Joe? It's been discussed. Mm Mm-hmm. 
I know you have Shark Tank friends, so I don't want to speak. We do. In a way that. Are you interested? Absolutely not. No, hard no. Hard no. Even for marketing. Even for marketing. Why not? Well, now I'm, I'm just, just going to offend your your your. You can offend network. them. I think it's not in my nature to go on national television and ask for money. That's an ego pride thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's one of the most popular shows on television. These are experts as the sharks. I get it. Yeah. For me, it just doesn't feel right to go on, on national television. It feels kind of beggy. That's an interesting take. But you'd, you'd happily take their money. Just not on national on television. On what terms? Whatever you want. Up to you. <laughs> if the, Happy if valuation. The, if the valuation is great, of course. They, uh, they're strategic partners. Yeah. But... I just don't want to do it on national TV. One of the things we learned in talking to a bunch of these companies on the CPG space, so to get off Shark Tank, yeah. was like, there, there's like this really interesting hack where if they can really get like in bed with the retailer, like with Gelson's or like these Ralph's or these Whole Foods, and they can solve a problem that these retailers are having. Yeah. And so it's not just like, here's my product, do it, it's so good. It's more of like, hey, Whole Foods, what are you guys missing in the in whatever space or you know whatever lines or in the novelty space, let's call it. Yeah. And then if you can like drum up some sort of shared connection where they, they'll now promote you because they've they've been interested in trying this new model or approach. Has that have you have you gotten to that yet? Yeah, yeah, because you have bit. the product for it. Yeah, and they also, from a financial standpoint, they have a vested interest in keeping it on the shelf, so it makes sense for both of us. So yeah, and are you getting hit with stocking fees, or is that not a thing? It can be a thing, but when your product is selling, there's always room for negotiation. <laughs> I'm trying so to be. You're avoiding the stock. I'm fees? trying to be PC here. That's really good. Yeah, there's there's uh, slotting fees. There's all sorts of fees for there's slotting. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, but when the product is selling, it's it's uh, negotiable. What's the next step for you? I'm gonna try one of them. Which one should I try? The vanilla. Yeah. For people listening, it's a Monday, and I had not planned to uh, have eat, ice cream on eat Monday. Eat ice cream at eleven o'clock. What's next for you in this whole endeavor? Uh, additional channels that are not grocery. We've got a lot of opportunity. Dude, that's so good. Thank you. That's oh my god, that's like really good, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, it's no mess too. That's what I like about it. It's like the perfect sweetness, super creamy. Is it gluten free? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, non-vegan. It's uh, non-vegan. That's non a better yeah. word. We're fine. <laughs> it is not plant-based. There were cows involved in that. Was it hard getting the sizing of this right? Like for yes. little kids versus like people it's like It's funny me. you mention that. We focus grouped it and I was getting people that were saying, ooh, it's too much or ooh, it's too little. We actually sell six ounces on the truck, which is what you're eating right now. Okay. But trying to figure out that and I would go to different focus groups and kind of ask and depending on where you are, people say it's too much, too little. So we tried to find the middle ground. I'm Again, here I am trying to be PC. Should I just break it down for you? For break a it down, yeah. All right. So... Because these pouches don't come in all sizes, I imagine. Co correct. I have catered from billionaires to homeless shelters. Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos to homeless shelters. Row. When I cater for the top 1%, when at the trucks, they say, just want to taste. Give me a little. I don't want too much. When I cater for lower income, people, can I get more? Can I have two? How much can I have? Does more come in a cup or a cone? So when I was focus grouping, I was kind of trying to figure that out. And I think we found the middle ground. Someone said to me, ooh, that's too much for my kid. I said, did they finish it? They said, yes. <laughs> so a fluent mom might think it's too much. Do people share it? Like if you have a kid, like if you have two kids, are you like, let's buy one pouch and I Johnny think, gets half and Susie gets not. the other half? I would think that you shouldn't do that, but you could. And if you can't finish it, you can cap it and put it away and eat it again later. How much are you trying to raise now in your Series A? Come on. I'm curious. I'm curious how fast, because you got to go so fast. That's the hard part. The velocities of it. The velocity. You're seeing the demand. Yes. You're selling out. Yes. So you know the cost. Yes. Do you have warehouse space yet? Are you looking for that? We have that. Okay. Cold storage. Have that. Okay. But that, you need more of it. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so then you're just doing the, I'm just doing the analysis. I here. know. I'm trying to do enough where we don't, we don't have to run into a second raise anytime soon. Yeah. I'm trying to have some reserves. A big one. To throw a bazooka at it when it really goes. What is the vitamin water guy telling you? Hard and fast. Yeah. We have something unique. We're first to market. Let's make sure we stay that way. Clearly, there will be someone down the road that's going to want to come in. How often do you think about that? Way too often. That's the thing that always terrifies me about new products. It's, it, it takes like nothing. And it can be anything, but it takes nothing for a company just to make it tomorrow. Let's call it Dannon. And then all of a sudden, they're pumping it everywhere and spending yeah. $10 million on advertising. My hope, and again, ego, nine years of a built brand, celebrity brand cachet, I hope that holds weight. I think the product holds weight. I think that people will, who do try it will probably 
do a cheaper formula. Won't taste as good. That's my opinion, but I could be wrong. It'll probably be cheaper. Yep. Yeah, they're going to try to kill you. But I would argue there's 100 pizzerias in town that are all in business, so we'll make it work. That's really interesting. That That's the thing that would keep me up at night, actually. Competition? It's competition, but it's also like who, you're the behemoths, right? The behemoths of the world are the one that can just tackle you, and it's hard. Or, yep. or just like copy you and that now you're in some legal battle for no reason they're just slowing you down i've had people tell me that a lot of the big guys will buy the innovators before they innovate themselves i should mm. be more concerned about the smaller guys c- coming in i don't know if that's true or not that's what i was told that's good advice yeah that helps me sleep it makes night. me feel I mean, better. if i believe it I'm like oh that makes a lot of sense <laughs> yeah all right let's go to the other side of it then acquisition do you care or do you want to do you have like a plan in your head where you're going to say let's build this to whatever it can be in the next three four years and if an acquisition offer comes in before then we'll just it's, it's a hard no for now. It's not a hard no for now. I'm open to it. I just got to see where it takes us. Well, do you have like a fun collab thing or like what would be like the most fun thing you do with this company? Just fun. Like you, you like Joe, like a, like a, like something for you personally that would just be like, oh, that, that thing I did was really cool. Whether it's like, I don't know, you, the, your favorite baseball team wins the it's World funny Series. You said that. Instead, of, instead of bringing up Live champagne, events. they're all having CV teenies I, in, the, uh, in the back locker room. I just catered for the NHL. Like okay. for the Stanley Cup in Vegas with these pouches. And you brought your kids. I brought my kids. I saw that. That was pretty yeah. cool on Instagram. Yeah. So I'll give you the short version. Basically, a producer that I had catered for in the past asked me, if you know any soft serve ice cream trucks in Vegas? I said, I don't, but I have these. She goes, I saw those, but can you ship them? I said, if you can get me access to my ki- for my kids to see this thing, sure. And I, wasn't, I didn't want tickets. I just wanted to go and get the kids to see the arena. Yeah. We did that. At the end of the day, she said, you can go to the game. We went to game five. We watched the Stanley Cup get hoisted. Incredible. But when we got there, we thought we were having the nosebleed seats. And we walked in and we were in the TNT suite with Wayne Gretzky and all these monsters of hockey. And everyone on the crew loved it. I don't know how I'm going to top as a life experience seeing the Stanley Cup one while sitting with Wayne Gretzky eating ice cream. (laughs) That's pretty badass. Yeah. So that's a good way to go out. Anyway, you said like collab. Of course, the NHL will be insane, but live events in general, sporting events, concerts. One of the weird things, and this is this is just the real estate side of things. On the for like nightclubs and bars, I've been asked, like people ask me, like, "Hey, do you know like a truck that could give people ice cream after?" And I'm like, "After what?" They're like, "After the club gets out." They want dessert. I've never in my life wanted ice cream after leaving a club, it's but possible. apparently it's like a monster thing. I wouldn't know because I have... Because you go to bed at 10. I go to bed. I have four Just kids. Just like me. I go yeah. to bed early. And uh, I imagine it, there would be a market for it. One of our uh, CVT machine clients is a brewery. They sell mm-hmm. a lot of ice cream. Yeah. I never would have thought that it would sell a lot of ice cream, but they do. And is it people having them in this, in this like actually at the brewery? I think it's at the brewery. They're also making like stout floats, but also breweries are all ages. So you get people that don't want to drink or kids that can't drink. Yeah. And they have their own vice. What about taking it the other way? Maybe this is harder. I don't know. What about like mini fridges and with hotels and stuff like that? Talking about that too. That seems easy, right? We're doing a sports bar, as you probably know. And so I think about this stuff all the time where it's like, what are we going to put in the suites? Yep. Is there a, you know, what's the thing that these suites come with? Sure. Having your product in, it would be fun and cool. And I don't think anyone would expect it, which is also different. Yep. Uh, having it in the bar is probably the same thing. What do they charge for it there? Is it the same? Do you do you have it all, all fixed at four ninety nine or is it? It's gonna. I mean, it's eighteen dollars it for a beer at a concert, so it'll be more. Not for us necessarily, but for them. Yeah. So when I say our demo is everyone, I know that's like the most ridiculous comment, but it's. No, you really believe it, and you see that. I do. I see it every day. How many not, nursing homes are you in? Tons of nursing homes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They, you don't have to chew. There's no spoon. <laughs> <laughs> no teeth. No problem. Hospitals. Forget Hospitals. the ice cubes. Yeah, I think food service is a huge avenue for us too. Is that what the the UCLA? What is UCLA? That? Campuses like Google, Tesla. Yeah, they want to feed their employees. What's the hardest part about this? Is it just focusing on like the thing that's actually going to bring in a lot of revenue, or, or you you don't care where you sell it? To, you just want to sell it. How do you think about that? I want to stay as premium as possible for as long as possible. I think that there will be certain retailers that will come our way. Yeah, that'll cheapen it. And I know that sounds weird for a product that's $5, but it's t- it, there's a reason the product tastes good. 
It doesn't seem like it's that expensive. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I actually don't buy ice cream. I haven't bought ice cream in a long time, so I don't even know what I'm comparing it to. You but... could get a pint of generic vanilla ice cream for like three to four dollars at the okay. grocery store. And but what's can... Ben & Jerry's? Like eight bucks, seven, yeah. eight bucks for like yeah. a pint? And you, a pint of Jenny's or Salt and Straw, you're looking at twelve dollars. Okay. So there's definitely a range. You should put them in packs, though. That seems to make more sense. I want to do a six pack, like a beer, like a six bottles, but six pouches. Yeah. What can you tease? What can you tell us what's coming down the pipe? What's coming down the pipe are more grocery stores. There are opportunities for outdoor events. This isn't happening yet, but we're interested in talking to airlines. But the college thing, we didn't even scratch the surface on with UCLA. There are so many campuses, and I wasn't even thinking about that. Airlines. Airlines. Well, the first class people get two ounces, and the people in the back <laughs> exactly. of the plane get exactly. four? How are yeah, you yeah. going to slice that up? When I was going out with this for our early investors, I was getting the constant feedback of there's no mess, no mess, no mess. I didn't realize we're also selling the convenience. I mean, I know that, but like that wasn't top of mine was just focusing on the taste. Yeah. But like you're selling a th- an experience where I can give this to my child in the back car, a back seat of the car, and there's no mess. There's no mess. You're really good at the marketing side of it. Thank so you. what 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 kind of promotion are we going to see? Are we going to see something like I'm putting spoons out of business? Spoons out of business. Where are we going with this? We're going to go I think Probably after McBroken.com, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the one thing people all know about is that soft serve ice cream machines are always breaking. Okay. So our tagline is this ice cream machine's never broken. But I think it'd be fun to just play into that. What happened to the CVTini? They're still out there. You're still doing that also? Yeah, some people want the fresh. Okay, so that's still a a business line for you. I still think that this, based on volume, will take over. I think so too. Yeah. This has the velocity. It's yeah. easy. It's amazing. It tastes good. People get it. I like the no mess thing. That Thank seems you. like a no brainer. Send me your deck. This is cool. Thank you. I don't know, man. CPG. It's a tough business though, but that's what I keep hearing. And it I'm seems all, like I, a, I feel like we're getting a lot of beginners luck. But maybe not. I don't know. We have a good product. That's a secret. I guess the way I look at it is the product will sort of set you free, give you a lot of early wins. And the, the team's the one that makes the decision later. And so it's smart of you to be talking to these the experts. Yeah. Cause they're the ones that get you into the sort of that next level where it's, where you're just out, you're outclassing people. At that point, your product's proven now you're just outclassing people in the business room. I got a taste of it. There's a CPG conference called Expo West where people go and they try and, you, you know. <laughs> Dude, it's insane. Okay. So I went there and I'm looking That's at That's like the Ikea. It's like fucking nuts. 18 floors everywhere. It's like, what's happening here? I'll, I'll tell you a quick story. Went to Expo West for the first time, uh, what was it, April? Yeah. And I'm walking around and I'm just seeing like, Everyone has the next vegan pop chip. There's like, it's oversaturated. Everyone has the same thing. But I was realizing that the buyers are there. So on day two of Expo West, I started reaching out to certain distributors and I snuck in a backpack full of dry ice and I ended up doing meetings without Without having a booth, without having a $60,000 booth. I took my meetings at the Marriott Starbucks. How'd it go? Very good. Expo West is tough because you're totally I'm not, right. I'm totally, so you're, I've, you're I've not so exaggerating far, let's, let's in any capacity. Back. I've knocked Shark Tank and I've knocked Expo West. So, you like, you like the hacking of it. You like to do it your way. I don't know about that. I don't want to pay $60,000 to see some buyer say, please pick me, please pick me. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Go on That's Shark Tank. Yeah, please, yeah. please, please. Yeah. Or I'm like, hey, I'm at Expo West. Do you want to try this? Let's go talk and have coffee. Yeah. That seems better. It's a lot better. Yeah. That's a lot better. That place is crazy. It's nuts. And all the, most of those businesses will be gone. I heard that years. on the floor, they say about 10% will make it one year. Yeah, I believe that. And you're totally right. But some of them ideas are just bad. It's like the, it totally, and what you're saying sounds like you're exaggerating and joking, but it's a hundred percent true. I it's would just never like, joke. It's like a cookie with some other version of dough that is better for you. It's got ashwagandha in it. Then you go to the next one and it's got L-theanine in it. And you go to the next, and it's like, stop, like yeah. just make a good cookie. And also the color coded tags bugged me. So the, the, <laughs> <laughs> the buyers had a certain code. So it's just like all these people like trying to, trying to have a conversation with you, but I think I see an orange coded uh, the buyer lanyard tag. headed my way. It just felt so gross. I can't do it. Maybe I'm not cut out for sales. Uh, I think you're right. I think you're just touching on the humanity side of it. And you, that probably makes you uncomfortable. It, it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. But the sales guys walking around like. But you know who they are. What I think, what I, what I find so funny about conferences, is it's, it's like, it doesn't matter what conference you go to. It could be Expo West or like software. And there's the same characters everywhere. It's like, that's the sales guy. Yeah. That nerd is the CEO probably, yep. you know, and then what's the girl? She's the booth, babe. It's the weirdest fucking it's thing. So it's like weird. so I annoying. I want no part it's of it, but I know cringe. that's part of the process. 
whether yeah. I agree with it or not. It sounds like you've done a good job avoiding it, which is, which is hard. Well, maybe not hard. You have a good product. You've been in business for a long time. Yeah, but just getting those doors opened can be challenging for new businesses. Yeah. So if you don't know, if you don't have a sales rep, you don't have the right people, that's your only option. Are you pitching the stores now or are they just coming to you? Both. But it's been easy, it sounds like, to facilitate meetings. It's been easy and then the early buzz and then showing them our numbers is just like, wait, what? We had a woman who's a buyer at a big grocery chain. She didn't believe what we told her our, our numbers were for the first few weeks. So she said, no, it's not possible. And then we got to show her the data and then we just got this store because of that. It's been nuts. I just sound like such an egotistical, like, hey, look at us. I don't think you do. <laughs> I don't hear much ego in what you're saying. It's, it's been selling like crazy. I mean, you also got the summer coming on. So it's almost like, I know you were trying to hit, you were saying May to launch, but I mean, the sun hasn't come out all No, May, it's been June so. gloom and our numbers are great. So yeah, when I say I'm scared about production, I'm scared about production. Yeah. Where's your, is it facility in LA or are you, I don't even know where you would do that. Uh, we are facilities in Southern California Okay. and we're expanding out of state to help with, help with distribution. I imagine help with distribution. Yeah. We have, if we have an East coast customer shipping from the West coast, it can be done. It's just, why would we spend that kind of money? So do you ship now? Like you can order this online? No. I mean, okay. just DoorDash. You're just saying like, yeah. So. Is there any opportunity there to partner with one of those like Uber Eats, DoorDash people? We could do that or Gold or? Belly. Yeah. I didn't yeah. want to do the exclusive with anyone. <laughs> no. You don't want to do it with anyone? I didn't want to do exclusive. Okay. Same with you're the, a man same, of the people? Same with grocery store. Yeah. that's Well, that's that makes more sense to yeah. me. What are the markets you're in? Are you in Indiana yet? Like, what, what's, what are the markets? Is All it just California? Southern California. God, I can just, I just know the people listening to this, like oh, any investor I know is just going to, they're just salivating at this. I don't, well. You're sitting on like something so wonderful. Thank you. There's additional opportunities outside of Southern California that I would love to talk to you about, but I cannot, but I will soon. Yeah. I know that's pointless on a podcast. No, it's good. But let me ask you this question just personally for yes. you, because I've, I've sort of seen your growth, right? Yeah. From, from when we first met to like now. And yeah. so what is it? Let's do two things. Okay. One, what has the process actually been like? Because it's a slow process. It's a lot of looking inward. It's a lot of what does the market want? And then you developing concepts and, and sort of committing to that. Yep. So what has that been like? mindset wise for you with four kids with all the things i'm not family a, i'm not a patient person so it's been for a little frustrating okay yeah and now but, what is it like now when you start to see after two years it was taking worth your all kids the, to the kings it was worth every second any advice you'd give people that are in that shit right now the shit storm i would just say just keep your head down and keep grinding and try to focus on only what you can, obviously with the hope of that being the goal, but just focus on what you can. Yeah. Because if you start getting ahead, oh, I'm going to sell it here. It's going to be there. I'm going to go on Shark Tank. <laughs> <laughs> the anti-Shark Tank. You're the, only, you're the first person. Isn't that terrible? I don't know if it is. I kind of like it. I don't know. I know a lot of people are like, why don't you... You you should go on Shark Tank. I think look, I think Shark Tank could be a really it's an interesting shortcut people can take, right? Because you know exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. Every you're going to be in every retailer next day. You better have distribution lined up. Your warehouse better be full because we know what's going to happen. And so just from a pure sales like like bazooka type moment, that's yeah. it. And and that makes sense to me. From a do I want to give my company away? It's you know, not even that's about that. Arguable. It's like please pick me. It's the gross like Hollywood actor something in me like. Please, please, please. I'm going to, Mr. Cuban, please, can I have a check? Where I'm like, no, this is great. And if he likes it, he'll cut a check. And if he doesn't, he doesn't. I'll find what if he else. just? What if you just do the super freak? You go in there being like, I'm, I'm, look, I know there's six of you here in this room. The only person I want to deal with is this person. And then you just, you just super freak it. And you go, I don't care, Mark. I don't care. Mark, I don't care. Damon, I don't care. Barbara, this is the love rebuttal. you, but They're going to say, then why are you here? Why are you wasting our time? To get a deal with you. <laughs> Whoever, who's the person? If you had to get one, who is it? Is it Mark? I don't watch the show enough. See, I'm... <laughs> Maybe you be, but then you go to the Mavericks and you go to like, you know, you can go to the, that's the live event basketball thing. Yep. The reason I say that is because it's happening more and more. Like the more that we interview companies that have been on it, the more it trips me up where it's like the entrepreneur is actually the one picking who they're going to work with. But let me go back. The people you're talking to, they, they like the experience. They enjoyed it. They're, they're grateful they did it. Dude, I don't know that anyone likes the entrepreneurship experience. No, no. No, being on Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's the unforeseen challenges of what's ahead to you? Like as you scale this thing, like what are the, what are the things that you know you have to pull off to, to sort of make it this year, maybe maybe up until summer of next year? 
I keep going back to it, but it's making sure we have enough product on shelf. And I don't know because I'm new here how long the retailers are like, it's okay, we'll get it in a couple of weeks. Like how bad is out of stock? We're not there yet, but if this thing goes to the plan, can I tell an upcoming retailer, you can have your product in August, six weeks from now, seven weeks from now. I don't know. We're going to find out because we're going to, we're headed in that direction. That is the hard part. That is, that's what keeps me up. All right. Tell everyone where they can find you, man. Follow your journey. They can find us at cvtsoftserve.com. Best Instagram account probably. Oh, th- thank you. I mean, In- honestly, thank so you. good. Very entertaining. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at cvtsoftserve. Gelson's. At Gelson's, at UCLA, at Tacos 1986. There's a local chain here in LA. And many more places soon. <laughs> and we, so if you go to our Instagram, you will be able to find out where we will be. Awesome. Yeah. Not on Shark Tank. Don't get excited. We will not be on Shark Tank. Thanks, Joe. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support and making it to the end of the episode. If you haven't already, please do a review and share the episode with your friends. If you never want to miss a beat on all things entrepreneurship, make sure to follow us on socials for daily content. See you next Tuesday for another great episode.